8,300. What does that number mean to you? 8,300 rocks me to my core because 8,300 students every day in the United States drop out of high school. That's a problem. When you think about school as we know it, and if it doesn't work anymore, what do we do? When I think back to when I went to school, and no offense to the squirrels, <laughs> but we learn things for a test. And then, unfortunately, a couple of days later, we forgot them. Collaboration was considered cheating. You couldn't work together. And our teachers knew what jobs they truly were educating us for and getting us ready for. Today, the focus has to be much different. Today, our students have to be critical thinkers. They have to be problem solvers. They have to be able to work collaboratively together to solve the problems that face our nation. And so just giving a test doesn't work. They need to have experience in doing collaborative type work. I ask you, what if all of our students were engaged in learning? What would that mean for our city? And what if we shape the future of our schools and our city by actually reinventing our schools? So what I want to talk to you today is twofold. I believe I have the answer because I've had the privilege of working with a lot of educators for the past four years to create this answer at our STEM Center Middle School in West Fargo. The answer is to create a culture that focuses on human needs. These four human needs specifically, affection, inclusion, control, and competency. And I'll get into those in a moment. One of the ways that you do that is by collaborative problem solving, working on problems together. So let's look, focus, or look at um, affection. How do you get affection? Well, it starts with relationships. It starts with creating a culture where it's cool to care, where our teachers care about our students, and our students care about our teachers, and our students actually care about other students. It's truly a culture where it's cool to care and it's cool to learn. So it starts with relationships. Affection. Kids want to be liked. They want to have conversations with adults. They want to know what we're thinking and we ought to want to know what they're thinking. Inclusion is belonging. When you work in collaborative groups, you belong to something. You belong to solving that problem, and everybody has a role. Everybody has a job to do. The community, the school, becomes inclusive. Control. Now, let's recognize that not all the time do our students get control, because ultimately there are things we have to teach. If you haven't heard about these common core standards, you will. So we have to teach certain things, but the way we teach them can look very different. And if we ask our students through student voice protocols, what was meaningful about a lesson? What was challenging about that lesson? And ultimately, what was interesting about that lesson? We will learn a lot about the way we do school. We will continuously improve the way we do school to meet the needs of our students. Competency is that last need that all humans have. And with competency, it's being able to do the job. When you have a guide on the side, which is your teacher, your facilitator, and when you partner with people, engineers like from John Deere, or medical personnel from Sanford, or engineers from Moore Engineering, or actually the water treatment plant in our city, when we partner with these people, our students learn they are competent in being able to do the job. They realize they possess the solutions that so much of our city and our world need. This is a chalkboard in our school, and it says, how will you impact the world? Our students walk by this every single day in our school, and we're serious about this. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders 
have an opportunity to impact their world, we need to give them opportunities to practice and cultivate those 21st century skills that are so very important. We need to model them, we need to teach them, and we need to give our students the opportunity to practice them. When our students have a mission and they become passionate about that mission, service naturally happens. This is a picture of our students that became passionate about the backpack program, which in our community is a program that puts food in the hands of students that would not normally have it on the weekend. And so at this juncture, we are filling backpacks to go out to all of our area schools so they can be distributed on that particular Friday. At the STEM Center, we've been collecting data for the past three years to truly see are we making a difference? Are we having an impact by focusing on these four human needs? And you can see what our students tell us. Overwhelmingly, we are meeting their needs 90% of the time. That's important data. That helps us keep going on this road. Recently, Senator Hoven said that we need to focus on the future we create not the future that just happens. So what do we want our schools to look like? What do we want our students to be able to do when they graduate? I'd like to share with you now an example of a project-based learning. In this project, our students read a novel called A Long Walk to Water. And in this novel, Naya has to walk eight hours every day to fetch fresh water in Sudan. And we at the STEM Center actually go on our own long walk to water. We head through our neighborhoods carrying our empty milk jugs and we arrive at a pond in Charleswood where they fill up their water jugs. Along the way we pick up ELL students which are English language learners from our high school and we start creating a relationship with those young people actually finding out firsthand what it means to come from Sudan and have to walk long walks to water. This young lady, as you can tell, is very skilled at carrying her water jug. No matter how much we practice, we did not become that skilled. Emotion is the hook. Students are able to take this water and do all sorts of science experiments with it. They also partner with more engineering in which they learn, what if, how would we solve this problem? What if we actually built a well in that village so that Naya wouldn't have to walk eight hours every day to get the water because the water was actually in the village? So we partner with more engineering. They begin to understand what it means to build a subdivision. What are the laws? What are the regulations? How much land do you have to give to the park board? All of those types of relationships and understandings occur. Emotion is the hook. It is the way in to get to that deeper level of learning that we so want our students to come away with. There are many other projects. As I said earlier, I could stand up here for at least an hour and share all of those different projects, but I want to give you a highlight of just three or four other projects quickly. Financial literacy. Our sixth grade math teacher tells all of our students, Great Aunt Martha has died, but she has left you $5,000. Your job now is to figure out what to do with that $5,000. What can be the best return in your investment? So they get on their netbooks and they start researching all of the banks. Many of them go out to all of our financial institutions in the community and they get literature on CDs and return rates and all of that sort of stuff. And then they put together a presentation in which they share with the other students what they would do with that money. They also share that with their parents at fall conferences. So they're doing communication, they're practicing collaboration, and they're actually finding out what financial literacy is. After the flush, and that one sounds fun, doesn't it? After the flush is truly looking at what happens to the water that you flush. Where does it go? And so we partner with um, the water treatment plant here in Fargo, and we learn about where it goes. And our students design their own water treatment plant using all of the filters, all of the screens, understanding the bacteria 
that grows and, and cleans the water. And we actually go on a field trip to the water treatment plant. And I have to tell you, it's smelly. But middle schoolers enjoy that. They also enjoy the gross things that the engineers pull out of the screens. And so it, it's a good time. The crime scene unit, we partner with the Fargo and West Fargo Police Department and we begin to understand fingerprinting, blood spatters and splatters. I didn't know they were different, but they are. And just the entire forensic science world. And finally, the oil unit. We know we have an oil boom in North Dakota, it just isn't right here. Out in the western part of the state, the influx of people has brought a lot of problems to that area. And so we ask our eighth grade students to think about the extra money that the state has. What would you do? What would you do to solve the overcrowding out there, the no housing, and the sewage problem that they have in western North Dakota? What would you do? It is masterful what eighth graders are able to come up with that were actual viable solutions to the problems that we face in the western part of our state. And I think that they should probably be going out to Bismarck and sharing some of those solutions. Humans flourish in the presence of positive emotions. Research will tell you that. I will tell you our students flourish in the presence of positive emotions. They enjoy collaboration. They enjoy, enjoy brainstorming solutions to problems that we put in front of them. They enjoy working together, building a prototype, building a model, and then being able to communicate that with not only their peers, but their parents and business people. Learning should be engaging. We can do this. We can change the face of education we can reinvent school in our city. And I'm telling you that 8,300 students every day are depending on it. Thank you.